The news at noon starts right now. New at noon, police in Holotus looking for information that'll help them solve a fatal hit and run along Highway 16. Officers say a man's body was found this morning along Highway 16 in front of Our Lady of Guadalupe Catholic Church. We're told the victim, a man, appeared to be walking towards San Antonio when he was hit from behind and thrown onto a hill in front of the church. Because it was so dark, police tell us no one saw the victim until this morning. The victim's mother told police that she heard him last night around 8 p.m. and that he was waiting for his ride home. A captain with the Holotus Police Department tells us there was nothing at the scene to identify the make and model of the vehicle that hit him. A construction zone became a danger zone for a driver on the city's north side. That man died overnight after losing control of his car on Wetmore Road just north of Wurzbach Parkway. As Katrina Weber reports, it happened in an area that other drivers say they have come to dread. A man who it seems was heading home instead crashed just outside someone else's home before three this morning. His car plowed through a backyard fence at Wetmore and Maverick Creek coming to a violent stop against a tree. San Antonio police found the driver who wasn't wearing a seatbelt, badly hurt and tossed into the passenger seat. He died later at a hospital. Investigators spent hours trying to understand what went wrong, realizing he lost control of his car in a construction zone. Day to day, it's, um, it's crazy. Because... It's an area that causes frustration for Salvatore Carnavale. At night, it's pretty dark, so the cones are not really set up correctly. He says the lane changes can be confusing. Police say the man who was killed had just entered a section where traffic goes from five lanes down to only two. One investigator told me he suspects that the driver may not have seen those construction barrels until it was too late. There's paint on the ground showing exactly where he went off course and ended up crossing the road. If you're driving and you're not used to this area, you can wind up on the same same lane as somebody else, and that's a head-on collision right there. He has seen well, yeah, several uh, close calls before. Police say the man killed this morning did live in that area. Katrina Weber, KSAT 12 News. Two suspects remaining free after police say they robbed a store on the west side and then attacked a worker. Officers say the suspects walked into the store in the 2100 block of Southwest 36th Street on Friday, November 20th. Police say they grabbed beer and products and tried to leave the store without paying. A worker tried to stop them and was attacked by one of the suspects. Police say both suspects tried to continue attacking the worker, but then stopped when that person was able to call for help. If you can help officers solve this case, call Crime Stoppers at 210-224-STOP. A young woman's life cut short over a cell phone. The Bear County Sheriff's Office says 24-year-old Giovanna Barrera was shot in the head during a robbery attempt on the northeast side on Wednesday. Sheriff Javier Salazar provided an update on this case today. He tells us the victim had just finished roller skating in her neighborhood and was taking off her skates inside her car which was parked outside of a home. This is in the 7600 block of Terrassa near Walsham Road, and that's when the suspect, Daniel Calvillo, walked up to her and demanded Barrera hand over her cell phone. She refused and instead tossed it under her car seat. At that point, it appears Calvillo, just in cold blood, at close range, uh, shot her in the head and, and killed her right there with, with what we gather to be just very little remorse at all, um, and then fled the scene. The suspect left the scene in a vehicle that was being driven by a second suspect, Kiana Jones. Through surveillance video from a nearby home, deputies were able to get a description of the suspect vehicle and a partial plate number. The suspects were arrested after a traffic stop. Calvillo is facing charges of unlawful carry and capital murder. Jones facing a charge of felon in possession of a firearm. Sheriff Salazar says her charges could be upgraded. Now to the latest on the coronavirus pandemic. In Bear County, the seven-day average is up again. It's now at 1,063 cases a day. Metro Health says six more people have died as well. Over in our hospital, 658 COVID-19 patients are hospitalized. 214 people are in the intensive care unit and 115 patients are on ventilators. There is hope on the horizon, though, this morning. The FDA's advisory panel now officially recommending the Pfizer vaccine for emergency use. And now we're waiting for the FDA to make that final decision. Officials say we could see Americans being vaccinated within just days. ABC's Rena Roy has the latest. 
It's considered one of the biggest logistical missions in U.S. history. Nearly three million doses of the Pfizer vaccine will be shipped to more than 600 locations across the U.S. There will be no higher priority shipments in our network than these vaccine shipments. So they will have the highest priority of anything we carry. That massive undertaking expected to begin within 24 hours of emergency use authorization from the FDA, which could happen any moment. We should be seeing the authorization of this first vaccine. We will work with Pfizer to get that shipped out, and so we could be seeing people getting vaccinated Monday, Tuesday of next week. This after an FDA advisory panel of medical experts voted yes Thursday to administering the vaccine for Americans 16 and older. We do have a favorable vote. Pfizer's clinical trials have shown the vaccine to be 95 percent effective with no severe side effects, a major turning point nine months into this relentless pandemic. Pandemic, the U.S. shattering daily death toll records for the last week, California reaching critically low ICU capacity. Twelve days ago, everything was under control. We went from a very manageable census to, you know, getting overwhelmed. Experts urging people to not let their guard down amidst this hopeful vaccine news. I am a little worried that we don't want to send the wrong signal here, right? The vaccines are going to be enormously helpful, but it will take a couple of months before they really start having an effect. And it's particularly important people be careful right now. And officials are reiterating that people need to stay vigilant with the next two to three months expected to be some of the worst in terms of lives lost. Rena Roy, ABC News, New York. Back here home, a woman facing charges after leading Bear County Sheriff's deputies on a high-speed chase. It all started at San Pedro and Loop 410. It went into shirts around 2.30 this morning. According to BCSO, deputies tried to pull the vehicle over, but the woman sped off. Her and a passenger led deputies from Loop 410 all the way to a neighborhood in shirts where the chase finally ended. BCSO says the woman had alcohol and weapons inside of the car. They say she is now facing charges of reckless driving and evading arrest. Now to a traffic alert, a road closure on the west side starting tonight. TxDOT crews are going to be working on the flyover ramps on the highway 151 and Loop 410's interchange. Now this starts at 8 o'clock tonight. It ends at 5 tomorrow morning. The main lanes of 151 from West Military Drive to Ingram Road and the 151 eastbound to westbound turnaround at Loop 410 will be completely shut down. Construction part of a Phase one of the 410 Southwest project. You can find a list of alternate routes right now on KZ.com. The Harburger Park land bridge set to open in less than an hour this afternoon. The new land bridge that will finally connect the two sections of the park. Pretty exciting times. The bridge sits 25 feet over the parkway, 150 feet wide to facilitate the crossings. Construction crews say some animals have already started using the bridge. The bridge's opening also means people can cross to the other side of the park without having to go all the way around to the other end. The land bridge will also feature an elevated walkway that should be completed later this month. You know, after a cloudy and somewhat rainy start to the day, we'll see big improvement this afternoon. But what about the weekend? I'll have your forecast coming up. You know, things are weird when the New England Patriots bench their starting quarterback. More from Larry Ramirez coming up in sports. A jolly sight at a local children's hospital. Santa was seen going down the side of the building this morning. What organizers of this event were hoping to accomplish after the break. More than a thousand families in our community are taking home a free holiday meal today as part of the annual Operation Turkey Drop event. It's a partnership between the San Antonio Food Bank and Bank of America. More than 200 community volunteers will be distributing nearly 150 pounds worth of food to families who pre-registered for the event, including a turkey and all the fixings. We worked hard to make sure folks got turkeys for Thanksgiving, and now we pivot uh, to the Christmas meal that can be, you know, more than just nourishing their bodies, but nourishing their spirit and soul. There's another mega food distribution event happening next week on Tuesday at the AT&T Center. You can pre-register for that event on the Food Bank website. Another holiday story here. Santa making an appearance at a local hospital and in order to maintain social distance, he went the extra mile. He repelled down the side of the building. Patients at Methodist Children's Hospital were treated to this jolly sight this morning. Santa also joined by some elves, and together they all spread holiday cheer. 
It's been a crazy year, uh, but it should be a year still filled with joy, like what this season brings. And Methodist is doing everything they can for these children to just try to bring a little happiness into their life. And they sure did. In addition to this up close visit with Santa and his elves, the hospital also live streamed the Santa sighting internationally. In that way, all pediatric patients were able to experience the magical visit. That is just so cool. Santa practices for those tall chimneys too. You know, he's got to go down those. And steps. my producer <laughs> said it wasn't broadcast internationally. It was internally within internally. the hospital. Okay. That's kind right. of a That's big pretty difference. Pretty cool. Yeah. Well, <laughs> but the kids still enjoyed it. They didn't care. They were seeing Santa and the elves. Yeah. They had some good moves too. Yeah. Love it. Um, as you've seen so far today, it has been a cloudy and somewhat rainy start, but we will see the sun return this afternoon, and we'll talk more about that, including what the weekend has in store coming up. But first, checking on the aquifer, it's down three-tenths of a foot today to 660.1, and man, our streak of quiet pollen counts continues. Just mold again today. It's low with a count of 230. We'll be right back. Welcome to KSAT Deals at KSATDeals.com. Today we have three products for you at great prices. We start with the Retro Game Console. This comes with 620 pre-installed games and two remote controllers. Now the retail price, $99. The KSAT Deals price, $39.99. That's a 60% discount. Moving on to the Aquasonic Toothbrush and Travel Case. This has 40,000 vibrations per minute. Comes with a travel case and eight brush heads. The retail price, $99. $99, KZ Deals price, $39.99, a 59% discount. Moving on to the Ultimate Anti-Aging Duo. The 24 karat gold and B Venom Anti-Aging Beauty Bundle. Nature's Botox. Retail price, $512. The case at deal price, $39.99. That's a 92% discount. And you can only get these deals at KSATDeals.com along with several others. I talked to my wife this morning. She was way out in Comel County in the truck, and you could hear the rain smacking on the windshield. I was like, really? whoa. She said, yeah, it's raining that? hard. Is About it still like raining? 1030. It's kind of, it's, try, yeah. it's trying to hang on. It's really, for the most part, just some light rain that will continue to filter through next couple of hours. But as we get later into the afternoon, it will come to an end. David, if she got some heavy rain where you could hear it, she was one of the lucky ones yeah. because most of this today has just been really light and has not added up to much at all. It did make for some slick roads this morning. We had several accidents out there. It was a bit of a mess. Uh, thankfully, at this hour, it's not as damp as it was earlier in the day, but we're still holding on to a lot of cloud cover and it feels a bit humid out there and we've got some raindrops on our live cam uh, camera there. So again, over the next couple of hours, can't rule out a lingering isolated shower, uh, but as we get past lunchtime, cloud cover will gradually start to break up. This rain will come to an end by our football games later this evening. Things will be just fine. In fact, mostly clear skies as we get closer to seven, eight o'clock this evening. Temperatures topping out mid seventies this afternoon, maybe a touch warmer for those of you west of 35 that will see the sun return just a little bit sooner. Radar is not overly impressive right now. We do have some light showers uh, in and around San Antonio and Bear County. Again, the these are just not adding up to much. This rain is really not heavy at all. Um, at times, even within the last hour, it looked a bit better on radar, but things look like they're starting to fall apart as far as the shower activity is concerned. A few more sh body showers up from Canyon Lake to Blanco off over to Kerr County and Kerrville. They're farther to the east, far eastern Lavaca County. We've got a nice stream of showers here. Uh, they're off to your east. And uh, really, though, when you look at the big picture, things just not very impressive as far as this rainfall is concerned. We could have used some much heavier rain, uh, but we'll take any little bit that we can get at this point. Uh, I do want to switch over to satellite because that really kind of shows you where things are starting to clear out well to the west of 35 Del Rio. You've been cloudy so far today, but now you're starting to see some sunshine as this clearing line makes some slow progress off to the east. So clearing today will happen from west to east across the area and future cast does show that. So 
through early afternoon. Again, a couple of light showers are not out of the question, but generally we'll see things start to clear out through about six, seven o'clock this evening. A few more lingering showers maybe in places like Howlettsville and Lavaca County, but for the most part, the rain should be off closer to the Houston area and far east Texas and things will continue to clear out overnight and we've got an absolutely beautiful day on tap tomorrow to start the weekend. Plenty of sunshine and some low humidity in place on Saturday, but things will turn around kind of quickly Saturday night through early Sunday morning. Overnight we will pull cloud cover back in and again Sunday morning similar to today. There could be some isolated to scattered light shower activity mainly through the first part of the day and then will clear out by Sunday afternoon. So why the messy start and then clearing on Sunday? Well, we've got another frontal boundary that will be moving through Sunday afternoon that will clear out the cloud cover and showers, but also turn things very, very windy Sunday afternoon and evening. So I'm very excited to bring back for the first time this season our holiday inflatable wind forecast, the frosty wind meter. Sunday night, it is going to get very windy. Even by Sunday evening, we're looking at some wind gusts above 30 miles per hour, and that will continue overnight Sunday into the pre-dawn hours of Monday morning. So with this wind forecast, Frosty and your inflatables could easily go out of your yard across the street because it is going to get very windy back half of the day on Sunday. So do keep that in mind for the upcoming weekend. I think the more enjoyable day by a long shot this weekend uh, will be Saturday next week. Looks quite nice, kind of cold there in the morning, so we'll get our morning lows back into the 30s starting on Monday, guys. Gumbo and chilly weather next week. Oh, yeah. Thank you. Nothing worse than seeing Frosty rolling down the street. Yeah, <laughs> kind of a depressing <laughs> Christmas sad. view. Yeah. I tell you what, a lot of people are really excited the fact that the Spurs are actually going to play a game in the AT&T Center on Saturday night. Been yeah, a while. and fans will not be allowed inside, but it will be broadcast locally, so we'll get to see the Spurs. Now, we won't get to see Keldon Johnson just yet, but still, young man had a great uh, eight games down in the Orlando bubble. His future is bright. And in college football, does Jeff Trailer plan to watch the Rice UAB contest? Coming up. Bill, I wanted to ask you about just the quarterback. Um, you're going to stick with Cam next week at quarterback. Yeah, great Sorry. question, Mike. I'm really glad you asked that. Cam's our quarterback. Uh, salty Bill Belichick says he's sticking with Cam Newton despite benching him last night for Jared Stidham in Big Board Sports. San Antonio Spurs are high on second year forward guard Keldon Johnson. The Spurs are loaded with young talent. And he may have the highest ceiling of them all. Keldon showed out in Orlando scoring 15 or more points in four of the eight games he played, reaching 24 twice. Pop said he's like a wild Mustang, wild and energetic. Big man Jakob Pertl says Johnson impressed him a lot. He just went out there and got it. Like He fought for every single ball. Like He was hustling on defense. He was super aggressive on offense. Like he wasn't afraid of anyone, just like got in the paint and was was making great decisions too, was making tough finishes. He he got his confidence, started making shots. So it was, it was really all in all a, a great progression for him. Johnson is currently out recovering from a minor foot injury. The Spurs open the preseason tomorrow night at home with OKC at six. All right, the UTSA Roadrunners are huge Rice football fans this weekend, and for good reason. If Rice beats the University of Alabama at Birmingham, then the Roadrunners will play for the Conference USA Championship, representing the West Division with a 5-2 conference record. But if UAB pulls off the win, they'll get the nod at 3-1 in conference play because of a better winning percentage. So, will head coach Jeff, Jeff Trailer be watching? I hate getting all anxious and stuff, right? I do that enough for a living. I know if I watch the game, I'll be like, I'm going to do my best to not watch it, uh, but I have a hard time believing I'll be able to pull that off. Uh, so I imagine I'll be locked in watching the game. Yeah, he's going to watch it. Trailer believes the Roadrunners will be invited to a bowl game after finishing with seven wins this season. Pro football coverage powered by Davis Law Firm. New England played at the L.A. Rams last night, and the Patriots' playoff chances are slipping away. Second quarter, Pats down 10 to nothing. Cam Newton throws a screen pass, and it's intercepted by the Rams' Kenny Young, and he's taking that back the other way for a 79-yard pick six. 
17 to nothing Rams. Newton had a horrible game, going 9 for 16 for 119 yards in that INT. He was sacked four times as well and benched in the fourth quarter. Rams roll 24-3, holding the Pats to their lowest scoring output this season. You know, we just got to be better. And, and it starts with me personally. Uh, just have to make more plays, and that's what it comes down to. Rams running back Cam Akers led everyone with 179 rushing yards on 29 carries. Got to love Coach Trailer. Yeah. I don't want to watch it, but I'll be locked in watching it. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> but I don't want to. Yeah, he's going to watch. He's, he's going to watch. Of course he is. <laughs> That's a huge game there Saturday. Thanks, Larry. You got it. Hey, still ahead on the news at noon, the COVID-19 vaccine will soon be available at drugstores, but a large retailer will also be able to distribute that vaccine. We'll tell you which popular grocery store you can get it at in your daily tenor. Plus, McDonald's getting into the holiday spirit. They're giving away free food. What you have to do, though, to be eligible. Still ahead. The Senate facing a midnight deadline tonight, trying to pass a stopgap measure to avoid a government shutdown. This is lawmakers try to buy more time to pass a COVID-19 relief bill. Millions of families struggling to put food on the table and pay the bills. Government aid keeps families afloat. It is set to expire, though, at the end of the month. Hundreds of thousands of Americans have relied on food banks during this pandemic. Who are really suffering and going through a lot of hard troubles. The expiring benefits include expanded unemployment aid, a freeze on federal student loan payments, and a moratorium on evictions. Right now, more than 19 million Americans are currently collecting some form of jobless aid. A concerning number as COVID-19 cases surge and businesses are forced to shut down again. As Ursula mentioned, 12 million Americans will have lost their unemployment benefits by Christmas if Congress doesn't act quickly. Still, families across the country are doing what they can to survive for the holidays and beyond. CNN's Yurkiewicz talked to one family in Pennsylvania that is experiencing hardship among the pandemic. I would describe this as the last nice memory that I had. Angela Kearney stands in front of her tree at home in Pottstown, Pennsylvania, reminiscing with her aunt and longing for last Christmas. This was when I received the new job. I was going to be able to buy a home for my family. The new job was as a paralegal after she put herself through school in her 40s while recovering from surgeries to fix a disability, racking up $63,000 in student loans. With a new salary of $55,000, she was finally able to provide for her children. That is more money than I've ever seen in my life. I promised them we would get a house. I promised them that they would be normal children and then the pandemic hit. And I can't keep those promises anymore. It looks like everybody's dancing. Just four months after landing that job, Kearney was furloughed in March and her weekly unemployment of $300 does little to cover the bills for her and her three children living at home. I have to take the bills and throw them up and pick the ones and hope that they total the amount that I have. Her unemployment is slated to run out in January, along with 12 million other Americans, and dozens of programs designed to protect them will too. First student loan, um, you know, payments have been halted. So once that expires, that's a new bill that's going to hit people um, quickly. You have um, local eviction bans that will expire. And then, of course, um, the expansion of unemployment insurance. As that's going away, we're seeing more people not, not put back to work. For years, Kearney and her family were on several government assistance programs, including disability and food stamps. Last year, she finally got off them. A lot of it was determination on my part to climb this mountain, and uh, we got shelved off the mountain. Which sent them right back on food stamps. How much money do you get on that card? We get 400 a month. Does that cover it? It has to, right? Congress is negotiating a stimulus bill that could drastically shape the next few months for families like the Kearneys. But significant long-term relief may not arrive until President-elect Biden is inaugurated in late January. For a lot of families, waiting until after the inauguration is just going to be too late.
Christmas will look different for many American families, including the Kearneys. What do you think of our lights this year, huh? This year, she's prioritizing paying the electric bill just to keep the lights and Christmas spirit alive. The bills won't be paid for December because Santa's coming to town. <laughs> Santa will be here. That was Vanessa Yurkovich. The Supreme Court of the United States has overturned the top military court regarding prosecution of old sexual assault cases from 1986 to 2006. This ruling overturns a loophole, a five-year statute of limitations for military sexual assault before 2006. Under military law, any crime must be charged within five years. But in 1986, Congress exempted crimes, including rape, that were punishable by the death sentence. In 2006, Congress made it clear that rape could be prosecuted at any time without limitation. Authorities in Milwaukee say an officer shot and injured a woman after she was attacking another woman. The incident drew in dozens of protesters. Officers say they responded to the scene in a suburb outside of Milwaukee around 9.30 last night. Police say the argument led to the officer to shoot the woman. This suburb was also the same area where protests and calls for changes to policing took place after an officer shot and killed Alvin Cole, a black teenager, in a mall back in February. If you woke up this morning and your car was all wet like mine and you got kind of excited, <laughs> we need the rain, but I guess it, it wasn't very significant. No, most of it was very, very light, and so it's not going to add up to much at all, unfortunately, but at least it's a little something. Still pretty cloudy at the airport. It looks like our sensor at the airport is still reading some uh, some rain right now. I just don't think it's updated. We did have some showers move through San Antonio, a broken line of some light showers over the last hour, but now those are off to the east and I don't see any rain falling at the airport at this moment. A bit more widespread light shower activity is up closer to the Austin Bryan College Station area here for us farther south. Things are starting to wind down. The last of the rain is there between Hondo and Uvalde. It will continue to move east this afternoon. You may get another little shower over the next couple of hours, but any any rain that would add up to much that has likely already fallen and moved on. So through the middle of the afternoon, skies will gradually start to clear out. Rain will come to an end from west to east. By this evening for our football games, we should be partly cloudy to mostly clear depending on where you are. Uh, fairly comfortable with temperatures falling into the 60s. Humidity will really fall off again late this evening and overnight. That puts our temperatures through tomorrow morning in the mid to upper 40s. So a fairly chilly start to the day on Saturday and tomorrow looks like a beautiful day. Much different than today. Sunshine from start to finish 70 degrees with low humidity to start the weekend. Now Another round of changes arrives on Sunday. We'll talk more about that and what you can expect for the next several days coming up in the full forecast. Ursula. Thank you, Katie. A heart transplant patient and a doctor breaking out in song at the Los Angeles Hospital. ABC's Alex Perche shows us a very touching moment. Sean Tiwanak, a musician from Hawaii with ukulele in hand, and Dr. Lily Stern, a former professional singer, shared this impromptu duet as he waited for a heart transplant. A powerful connection between patient and doctor, the video quickly going viral. The wait for a heart transplant is often more than six months. But soon after his video went viral, Tiwanak learned a donor heart was on the way. About 30,000 organ transplant operations are performed in the United States each year, and Tiwanak became one of about 2,000 heart transplants performed annually. With a big smile and waves to his team, the beloved patient was wheeled into the operating room to receive his new heart. The surgery went well, and the donor heart functioned beautifully, according to the surgeon. Tiwanak expressing his thanks to the donor and the donor's family in hopes to live a life to reflect the magnitude of the gift he has received. 116,000 people in the U.S. are currently awaiting donor organs. With this Medical Minute, I'm Alex Perche, ABC News. So coming up this half hour, Floresville heading into the playoffs, riding high with one of their top running backs in South Texas. Larry Mears with more on their matchup coming up in sports. And we've seen the toilet paper, paper towels, and other essential cleaning supplies flying off the shelves this year. Now, 
it's Clorox wipes when you can expect to see them back in the stores next in your daily cheddar. Hello everyone, this is your daily tech and business briefing from Cheddar. Walmart gearing up to administer COVID-19 vaccines in stores across the country. The chain Reading, there are more than 5,000 Walmart and Sam's Club locations to receive and store the vaccine. And this comes as an FDA panel gave the green light to the Pfizer BioNTech vaccine. Now, because it has to be kept at such cold temperatures, Walmart ensuring their locations have both freezers and dry ice. Meanwhile, if you haven't stocked up on your Clorox wipes yet, it might be too late. A top Clorox executive saying that customers likely won't see the popular disinfectant wipes on shelves until halfway through next year. This comes as the country faces a surge in coronavirus cases. This marks the third time that Clorox has suffered from supply chain issues when customers needed it most. And the Kardashians are back shortly after announcing the end of their popular reality show, Keeping Up With The Kardashians on E! The famous family inking a deal with Hulu and Disney for a new unscripted series that comes as a broader push towards streaming and changing consumer habits happen. And the Chichetter Business and Tech Update. I'm Baker Machado, coming to you from Cheddar Studios in Lower Manhattan. It is the season of giving, so McDonald's is doing its part by giving away free food. The fast food chain will dole out menu items that it thinks fictional Christmas characters would love. It includes things like medium fries for Rudolph and coffee for Scrooge, just to name a couple of the promotional features they're going to have. It will be different every day on the menu. To get the deal, you have to make $1 minimum purchase, and then you place the order through the McDonald's app. A new meal deal starts Monday and runs through Christmas Eve. So Scrooge would like coffee to maybe cheer mm -hmm. you up a little bit. Is that right? Yeah. Okay. Live look outside with live cam. Very dark in this picture. As, are we going to see the sun later today? We've still got a lot of clouds right now. Yes, we're going to see some sunshine even by this afternoon and then a whole lot of sunshine tomorrow. So I promise you the weekend will not look like it's looked so far today. The aquifer is down three tenths of a foot to 660.1. And if you missed the pollen count, not much to see here. Mold is low today. However, we may see it jump up a little bit tomorrow when you factor in the, the moisture that's been in place on this Friday. We'll take another look at radar. Get you ready for the weekend coming up. This SA Salutes Holiday Greeting is brought to you by Texas Med Clinic. Warmest wishes from the marketing department at Texas Med Clinic. Merry, Merry Christmas. Christmas. All right, welcome back. Well, I know it hasn't been the most beautiful start to the day today, but we'll take even a little bit of rain where we can get it. The commute was a bit messy at times with some slick roads, but as far as radar goes right now, not a whole lot to see. We've got a couple of very, very light showers that will continue to pace through from west to east for the next couple of hours. But for the most part, uh, this rain will be winding down this afternoon. We'll even start to clear out just a little bit. So this is good. This is when I have my two clickers, but this dress has pockets so I can put my put my other one in there. There we go. So here's the big picture looking at Texas light rain from here in South Texas. It gets a bit heavier and widespread as you go up closer to the I-20 corridor and even more rain, even some winter weather up through the central portion of the plains there. There is a cold front that is moving into North Texas this afternoon. It will get to our area late this evening and overnight. So what we'll continue to see the rest of the day again, the rain and cloud cover really uh, making a move off to the east by five, six o'clock this evening. Skies will Will really be clearing out and we'll be done with the rain. So any football games this evening will be in really good shape. This frontal boundary will come through overnight without any rain, but what this will do is bring in some drier air for Saturday. So sunshine and really low humidity tomorrow. It is going to be a very, very enjoyable day, but by Saturday night into early Sunday morning, moisture will try to build back in from the Gulf of Mexico. That will leave us with a cloudy start to the day Sunday with a few more scattered light showers possible early in the day, kind of similar to what we're seeing today. And then also similar to today, another frontal boundary will move through Sunday afternoon that will clear out the clouds and the rain for us as we get into the back half of the day on Sunday. Uh, but that will make for a very windy into the day on Sunday. So these fronts moving through uh, will kind of keep us on our toes the next couple of days. They're also going to keep humidity going up and down. We'll see a drop in humidity tomorrow. 
tries to rebound early Sunday, but that second front Sunday afternoon will drop it once again and essentially we'll have nice dry air in place pretty much all next week. So we'll see some changes in our humidity temperature 70 tomorrow and again Sunday afternoon. It won't be until Monday that we will really feel a bit more of a chill out there. But keep in mind your weekend, a much more pleasant day. Saturday, Sunday is when that second boundary comes through and then things will turn quite windy. So here's your day on Sunday. Jumping ahead a couple of days here, but I do want to go ahead and plant the seed now that it is going to turn quite windy at times Sunday afternoon and evening. First part of the day, just fine. Winds will be on the lighter side, but behind that cold front when it comes through in the afternoon, we'll see our wind gusts jump above 20 miles per hour. I expect by late Sunday evening, we're talking about wind gusts up closer to 40 miles per hour at times. So Sunday night will be the time to kind of batten down the hatches and make sure that your outdoor holiday lawn ornaments are taken care of. Rest of the day today again will clear out. Rain chances will come to an end. The next couple of hours will drop down into the 40s overnight tonight under clear skies with light winds. So starting off in the 40s tomorrow morning will be up to near 70 tomorrow afternoon with low humidity. A great day. A few more morning showers possible Sunday and then turning windy. That takes us into Monday morning. 37 out the door Monday morning. So the chill will be back next week, guys. All right, gonna make gumbo. This is what's good about preseason games. We can watch the new guys and the young guys get a lot of playing time. Yeah, and you have to figure with some of the guards uh, being out because they're injured or whatever right now, Trey Jones, Spurs rookie, is probably going to get some playing time, hopefully tomorrow night, and we can see what the young man can do, and he is ready to play. Plus, Floresville running back Darion Murphy overcame a car wreck to have a fantastic season. Coming up. Spurs will tip off their 2020 preseason tomorrow night when they host the OKC Thunder at the AT&T Center without fans but on TV. And we'll get to see the development of the Spurs' new high-octane offense that we've got a glimpse of in the NBA bubble in Orlando. Spurs' second-round pick, Trey Jones, played for Coach K at Duke. And now Greg Popovich for the Spurs. And with at least four players recovering from surgery or injuries, Jones may get thrown into the fire on Saturday. I'm extremely excited for sure. Uh, I'm going to do everything I can to make sure – I'm um, ready when my name is called, and um, obviously um, I want those guys um, that, are, that are a little banged up right now to get back healthy so um, we can have a full, full healthy roster and uh, continue to, to battle out with the other teams. But until then, I mean, I'm going to continue to um, work as hard as I can, make sure that, you know, I'm just ready um, to, to help this team in any way possible to try to get as many wins as we can. The NBA and the NBA Players Association released the latest results of COVID testing where eight players have tested positive. Led by junior running back Darion Murphy, the Floresville Tigers will play Mercedes in the Class 5A Division II by District Playoffs tonight. In eight games this season, Murphy rushed for 1,418 yards and 19 touchdowns. Now, he says he feels blessed to be playing football again because on July 9th, 2019, he was in a car wreck with his mother. Both are good to go, but the accident cost him his sophomore season. I was a passenger in an 18-wheeler uh, rear and it me and my mom. This is what that 18-wheeler did to the truck Darion Murphy and his mother were driving that day. Darion suffered a minor back injury, and doctors told him to sit out his sophomore season just to be safe. You know, I was honestly devastated about it. It hit me, like, instantly because as soon as the doctors told me, it just crushed me. Murphy is team first, and that's what bugged him the most about not playing. He couldn't help his Tiger teammates on the field. First thing I thought it was like I couldn't help my team and also like the seniors last year they were also close to me so it was I wasn't going to be able to participate with them. On the bright side, Murphy got to play with this year's senior class and they're loving it. I'm picking up my blog, O-Line's picking up their blog. Uh, I'm having a guy over here, I look the other way, Darion's halfway down the field already just running, running. So just, he's an amazing, he's an amazing athlete. So, so much speed, so much strength, so much field awareness, agility. Darion, he's a special athlete. I've grown up playing with him. Uh, he, he, he's a great athlete. Uh, it makes it easier for us. All we have to do is get a little crease for him and he's, he finds the hole and he takes it off. Darion says he hopes his story about never giving up will inspire other student athletes. Things in life are always gonna be tough. Like nothing's an easy step, so, 
even if you get down on yourself, always just continue to pray, praise God, and you'll always have people behind you. So let that motivate you, and you can succeed without just quitting, you know? Never quit. Darion Murphy is a fine young man. I'll tell you what, he's a junior. He's going to be highly recruited. For a junior, that's pretty good advice. Yep. Never quit. Never quit. Keep going. Good for him. All right, Larry, thank you much. Well, SA Live is down at Market Square on this Friday, and probably some good eats, too. With <laughs> well, David on the David show, and, you know there's going to be some yeah, good eats David somewhere. David and Jen yeah. can't go wrong. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you know, we, we might have a little something-something later on the show, but you got to watch and see what we got. But, well, you know, we're going to explain exactly why we're wearing <laughs> yeah. these comfortable <laughs> sweaters here in just a little bit. But first, we want to let you guys know today is Day 7 of the 12 Days of Christmas giveaway. you got to watch to find out what Day 7's gift is going to be. Plus, if you enter to win, you have a chance of winning all the other prizes so as well. And then right here, we have a cute little demo we're going yes. to show you real quick. A little, a little DIY craft. Stephanie Pena Frost with Princess and the Monkey is here. This is all the rage right now, right? Oh my god. Gnomes are all the rage. You cannot find a gnome anywhere as it is. And so I'm going to show you today how you can jazz up some gnomes, make these cute little ornament, or, gnome ornaments with some leftover things that you have, and just kind of get in that holiday spirit with the gnomes. Love, Love it. it. That and also we're going to be talking with Hillside Boutique about their holiday brunch and how the little kids can meet Santa. It's going to be so fun. Exciting. Yes. Also, Selena, it's all the rage right now on Netflix. We catch up with Ricardo Tavia, who's from San Antonio, to talk more about his connections and what the legacy means to him. And plus, if you have a person that is difficult to buy a gift for, that's what these are for. We're going to have a <laughs> Christmas list that is the ultimate Christmas list for that tough person to get a gift for. I want this already. Hey, I want these. You. These are really comfortable. All that and more when SA Live continues.